February is prime time to get out there and hunt those delicious slab crappie. So in today's video, I'm going to be breaking down an entire creek arm to show you that you could do the same thing on any lake that you're on to have better success in February to try to find these pre-spawn or staging crappie. Only seven in the morning, walking to the shop because my daggone truck still ain't running. But we got an idea to fix that. A little intermission and we are doing a super raffle is what I'm calling it. We're going to be raffling off just a buttload of baits. You know, I'm going to be quite honest with you. I'm not going to be transparent or anything or beat around the bush, guys. The rents do. The bills are due. Some months are better than others. You know, last month we did all right. The month before that we did all right. But we struggled a little bit the month before that. And y'all helped out. So this month we're going to try something new. And I mean, I'm not just going to be like, hey, here's $20 worth of jigs. You know, buy whatever amount you might win them. No, no, no. We, we're not playing that around here. So what I've done is these are all OGs and little minnows. We've got blue ice. We've got the, the new minnow color that I'm, I don't even think I'm going to release because it looks so good and I'm just going to use it myself. So these are all 50 packs. Uh, we've got grape ape. We've got a peach color that I'm not going to release. We've got uh, crappy man green, monkey milk, crappy man green little minnows, pearl. Which it's this is going to add up to two hundred dollars worth of baits. That is the grand prize for the raffle, but it, it doesn't end there, guys. It doesn't end there. I've got two more fifty dollars worth of ten packs going out in every kind of color you can think of, from the little minnow to the OG. We might even throw some beavers and flukes, and we throw them on the floor. You know, there's going to be two $50 packs given out too. But there, there's more. We've got... We've got all these boxes. And for every 10 that sign up for the raffle that I'm going to explain here in a minute, we're going to be giving away one of these in the raffle too. So... This is how you this is how you sign up. So I've got it on the website. It's gonna be linked down below, top comment pinned. You go on there, they're gonna be $20 slots. The slots are unlimited. The boxes are unlimited. So if I sell a hundred of them, there's gonna be 10 boxes gave away. Uh, the grand prize is gonna be a $200, pretty much a crappy man jigs, everything you can ever need. We're gonna have all the the minnows the ogs uh i'm about to start making jig heads now we're going to throw some of those in there and then we're going to have two of them they're going to be 50 dollars a piece you know a mix of little minnows and the og and some jig heads and for every 10 that sign up there's going to be a starter box gave it gave away too so you've got a chance to win a whole bunch of stuff it's going to be 20 dollars slots uh, this is going to run for a week. So today is Thursday. So next Thursday, February 1st, I'll make a new video and I'm going to, every $20 is an entry. So I'm going to, you know, cut everybody's name out. We're going to put them in a hat and I'm the first one out the bag is going to be the winner for the 200 bucks. I mean, it's, it's over $200 already for that bundle that the first one out the hat is going to be for that bundle. And I'm just going to put it down and then we're going to draw for everything else. And then the winner will be shown at the end of the video. But, you know, this gives you all a chance to get lucky, win you something. But it also gives me a chance to get caught up on stuff, you know, and order some more stuff for the business and keep everything running smoothly. So I hope you all check it out. I will be making a little bit better uh, video probably in the next couple of days explaining it more but go check it out they're on the website right now what's going on guys welcome or welcome back to turner fishing i'm steven turner so february fishing it's honestly one of my favorite times of the year to fish 
Now, it's, it's either hit or miss. It's either going to be extremely cold, and you're going to have to bundle up, and you're going to go out, have to go out there and find those really huge two to three pound class fish, or you're going to have a really good warming trend, which are going to have these fish stuck in some part of this creek channel. So on today's video, what I want to do is kind of just get into my head. I'm going to pull up the map. I'm going to explain my thought process if I was fishing a new lake because I'm pulling up a creek that I've never fished before and where I would start looking for brush piles, good docks, great areas that, you know, somebody could have sat a brush pile, areas where they're going to congregate, uh, areas where there's going to be, you know, more bait fish or whatever. We're just going to break this thing down to hopefully give you an insight on your home body of water of where you should be fishing in February. We've got, we've got pulled up is just, you know, I pulled out the map here and I zoomed in on one of the longest creek arms that I could see that I've never fished before. And we ended up on this one. I'm not even really sure. We're okay. I know where that's at. Anyway, <laughs> so we're going to zoom in and we're going to start off right here at the point and kind of just go over down this creek channel on areas that I would, you know, check as I'm going through. Because the thing about February is you're going to have a lot of fish that are feeding up, bulking up for the spawn. But you're also going to have those fish are, that are kind of, you know, their metabolism slows down just a little bit. Not a lot. Crappy's not really affected too much with the cold water. But there are, you know, instances where you can go to that deeper water to catch more fish. I mean, I'm not necessarily saying you're going to catch the biggest fish. But those deeper brush piles out here towards the main lake are going to be a little bit cooler and a lot more, you know, readily available for those groups, big schools of crappy that you can go out there and limit out on. So first and foremost, you cannot rule out a, a good point. And this one right here is no exception. You've got really, really big contours right here. It looks like there's a hump right here that comes up to 15 feet. And you've got a drop off that goes down to about 30 feet right here. So I would position my boat to come right across this point. And there's probably a man-made structure or a brush pile on this point. Or you could have a good assumption of bait fish and be able to find crappy eating the bait fish up under it. But I don't really spend too much time on the main lake points this time of year. Because what I want to do, I want to go down this creek and see the channel's not really defined in this creek too much. But we're going to go down, see what we can figure out here. When we go down this creek right here, we're going to look at these docks right here on the left. And at the, the contours on these docks, you see there's eight feet right here. I would, not, I would not even mess with these docks this time of year. These first ones going in, even out here on this point, I mean, your deepest dock is in about six foot of water. I mean, that could possibly have a couple fish on it during the spawn, but I'm just going to pass right over that. And we're going to look out here coming into this, you know, we've got a lot of 55 feet and all that. I mean, I, I'm, I really try to, to stick a 35 or less. So we've got a point right here that's coming out really shallow shoal. They should have marker buoys and all that on it. We're going to check it out real quick. Looking at we got some pretty good contours. So, I mean, honestly, you could probably idle through here. And this would be a, a good windbreak spot. If you had a, a really bad north wind or something, you could try to get out of the wind. And you could possibly find some stuff in here. Look like we got a little creek bed going through right here. But let's go on down. I mean, we could check the other side too. See what's going on with it. See these docks. All these docks so far are only about seven feet deep. Now we do have a little saddle right here. Which, I mean, there's probably a brush pile right here in this saddle i would definitely scan over the saddle because it's a really good bass fishing spot so a lot of people probably would drop brush for the you know bass fishing so the crappy would pull up on there anyway so just something different is what i'm looking for because you got your main little channel coming through right here and then we're going to come off and ooh. now see what happens here now this is nice 
you see that we got a 25 feet drop right here. It goes from, let's see what this dock is. This dock is 13 feet and it drops down to about 27 feet right here. Yeah, I can guarantee you there's probably crappy on these two docks right here. And as you're going through the channel, we've got another little saddle right here with 25 feet uh, near a dock. So this dock and probably, yeah, just this dock is what I would check. And maybe this one up here, they could pull off this deeper creek channel out here into 30 feet and pull up to these docks. Uh, to feel a little bit safer if the water's clear. But this saddle right here, I mean, that, that is an ideal place to drop brush. So I would definitely be checking these saddles. Uh, let's check the other side. The other side is is just shallow, guys. The other side of this creek channel. I mean, we've got a, a pretty good ledge right here that you, you could probably tight line or troll this ledge right here. But still, I mean, it's, it's a little bit shallow. I'm not too sure what the, the bank looks like or what it's made of. But then we've got another dock that has access to deep water. It's at 11 to 9 feet, but it's got a really good drop off. And that would be a, a really, like if you're a homeowner or something, that would be an ideal place to drop brush. So all these tight contours, I would side scan or down scan to them. Cause they've got to be a brush somewhere through here <laughs> but everything else i'm not really there's another tight dot right here but yeah see see the end of this dot right here now this is subject to, to change you know the map it might not be 100 percent accurate but there's a tight contour change right here the 15 to 20 feet and there, that's the common thing i'm looking for when i'm looking at a map or looking at a new spot to fish is I want the, the deepest dock or the, the dock that has the most depth. If you have a lot of docks around you that is only like six or seven feet deep and you got one dock that's 15 feet deep, that's the dock that they're going to be on. I mean, that's just, it's, it's a simple process, but getting that in your head is, is something, you know, just what you got to look for. And you also have two humps right here, which, I mean, they're 20 feet humps. Those are ideal places for brush piles. And that's what you're doing. You want to look at the map and be like, dang, that looks like a good spot for a brush. And either A, you load up a bunch of brush piles and you go take them out there and you, you know, get you a really good spot. Or B, someone else has already done it and you find their brush pile. And I mean, that's fishing. I mean, a lot of people get teed off when other people fish their brush, but I hate to be the, that type of person, but you don't own the water, bro. Like, if you put a brush pile in, I'm going to find it. And if it's got fish on it, I'm going to catch them. That's, you know, I don't know. It's common sense. But we're going on down here. Let's see. We've got a lot of shallow on the right. So this left side of this creek is where I'm going to focus. I do not care about anything on this right side until those water temperatures get up to 65. You know, four, low four, or mid 40s to 50. I'm on this left side. I will. I won't even look at the other side. We've got a lot of deep contours. Look at this big old dock right here, though. Oh, there's there's three huge docks right here. Look. Oh my God, there's four. I mean, these are coming out. They're they're kind of shallow, but they offer like this one right here is perfect. The end of this dock, 16 feet of water, guys. That is a perfect dock. And you also come out here. You've got a really good creek channel. You got two more humps to check. You've got this little bitty eddy right here, not eddy, but a uh, saddle that comes up to 17, but it drops off really fast to 12. <clears throat> so if you have a lot of bait in here, they could corral these baits in this little channel. And that would be a pretty good spot to uh, live scope or tight line through. And apparently you've got a submerged bridge, but I don't really believe these maps when they say they have a submerged bridge, bridge most of the time. But yeah, as we keep going, you know, I would probably cut off right here where this white stops. That's where I would stop looking in February. Now, if your water temperatures are a lot higher in your neck of the woods, say 58, 60 ish around that mark, check out these shallower docks. But it's, it's really hard to side scan a shallow dock. It's really hard to uh, use live scope for those shallow docks. You kind of got to 
hit or miss because when you're up there that shallow, even with four facing sonar, you've got to knock your depth down just a little bit and uh, a five inch brim, it's going to look like a 12 inch crappy once you get in those shallow depths. So you've got to fish around a little bit more. <coughs> Now the best way I would tackle this, we're just gonna break that down really quick. You know, I'm a one pole user. I'm gonna, you know, cast down docks, uh, vertical fish brush piles, use my 13 foot pole with forward facing sonar. That's how I like to fish. But if you're not, if you're, you know, a long liner or, you know, tight liner, what I would do, I would start the moment we see these uh, contour lines, which are these little lines on the map, if you didn't know. But the moment we see these contour lines blacken, like if you're looking at the map and you start seeing them get really, really black, and it looks like it starts right here. So I would drop my minnows, my jigs, or whatever right here, and I'm going right down this blue line. I mean, I'm going to follow that blue line all the way through the saddle, all the way down this creek, and I guarantee you there's some fish somewhere. Yeah, guys, I just wanted to make a video, you know, get you in my head, get you ready for February, you know, pull out Navionics or the Ona map on your phone, get on your computer, pull out just a regular map and look for these key areas so you're not wasting time. Time is the most valuable thing that you can have in life because, you know, yeah, money's nice, but the time that it takes you to make the money is always lost. So my thing is time is money, but money takes time. And fishing is money and fishing takes time if that makes sense you know you could be out there for eight hours and not catch nothing because you're in the wrong areas and that's why i make these videos i want you out there catching fish feeding your family having fun catching the biggest fish of your life go out there guys try out these spots on your body of water look at your creek channels try to find the best docks the best little saddles the best humps the best points take your time and you know stop messing around get out there find these fish catch them put a crappy man jig in their face uh i hope you all you know enter the raffle i'm really excited about doing this this is a lot of baits going out and um i mean whoever wins this thing they're gonna be set for life with crappy man jigs you know we've got a lot of things going on around here trying to upgrade everything trying to get my life on track financial wise i mean my life's great but you know like I said, time is money, and that's, you know, that's the whole deal. Anyway, guys, I love you all. God bless, and I appreciate you.